All right, how's everybody doing today? Um, figured we'd do a quick little supplement to the normal sort of weekend version of the podcast, vidcast, all that kind of stuff. And I'm um, going to revolve around this guy here. Uh, what we'll be looking at is kind of one part review and two parts metrology. Uh, picked this up for 10 bucks on Amazon. I uh, was looking for an instant read thermometer. Thought it was pretty good because it actually has a calibration adjustment feature built into it, even though they call it recalibrated on the front. Um, uh, but uh, figured I'd show you how to actually do a metrologically traceable calibration of this in your kitchen without any form of real uh, digital type of device or um, other devices because we're going to use something called intrinsic standards. We're going to actually use a property of nature to perform the calibration on this guy. Um, so just a quick little, what is this guy? He is a G dealer meat thermometer, um, just basic um, instant read thermometer. Uh, you see a ton of them out there these days. Um, thought this one was pretty neat. Um, comes with a magnet inside of it so you can stick it on the hood in your kitchen or to the side of your refrigerator, whatever the need be. Um, we've got the, this guy here. Um, kind of cool. Turns on automatically once we extend the probe and says it's about 79.9 in here. I was just touching the actual device so that might be in the neighborhood of what it actually is. Uh, it's more like 75-ish in here in actuality. But let's... Um, dive down and actually show you how we're going to go about calibrating this device. All right, so the first thing we're actually going to do here is we're going to use some ice water that we've made from distilled water. It's important to use distilled water because any minerals that are added to the actual water will reduce the actual freezing point of water so we wouldn't have the intrinsic standard we're looking for of pure water with ice that's made from pure water. Um, I've simply made kind of a slurry here. Um, the ice cubes I use are a little too big for this process. Um, I ran them through my food processor real quickly to kind of get them a little bit finer, but didn't work out as well as I wanted to. Uh, in the future, I'll probably be purchasing some slightly different ice cube trays probably be doing it momentarily from Amazon that produce like sort of gumdrop sized ice cubes that are ideal for this usage but we should be pretty close as it is with this and what we can see is when we stick in our pen here we are reading right at let's get him Yeah, 32 and a half degrees. I call that pretty good for what this device is. They claim a two degree F accuracy on it. Um, so 32 and a half, well within that specification. All right, so for our first reading, that one's pretty straight ahead. I mean, it's basically just ice and water. Uh, smaller ice cubes will make it work better. Um, NIST has a great video on how to do this as an actual calibration standard and I'll put a link down below to that video so you can check that out on YouTube as well. Um, but as we saw, pretty reasonable, pretty good performance um, for a $10 thermometer, be honest with you. Now, the thing is that one point doesn't really tell us the whole story. Um, I'm not going to be using this to test ice, probably ever. Um, I'm going to be using it as a meat thermometer, uh, making sure that things are properly cooked before I go serving them and not overcooked or undercooked, which is kind of a bigger deal. Um, but we don't want it overcooked and dried out either. Uh, so we want to know that it's accurate in that range of maybe 120 degrees up to 180 degrees Fahrenheit, where we're using it for various food purposes. Uh, so. How are we going to go about getting another number? Well, we're going to use that same distilled water and use the boiling point of water as an additional calibration point. However, this part does get a little bit trickier than the freezing point. Freezing point is easy. It's 0C, 32F. doesn't really change very much. 
Uh, boiling point, on the other hand, is a little bit different animal. Uh, when we look at the boiling point of water being 212 degrees Fahrenheit, that boiling point is based upon the fact that we would be under some ideal conditions. And those ideal conditions would be sea level and a certain barometric pressure. That's not where we normally are. Um, barometric pressure changes quite a bit. Now it happens to be a pretty uh, clear sunny day out here. So our barometric pressure is fairly high. Um, we're at right at 29.83 inches of mercury. Um, and I looked it up, easy enough to do, to find your elevation and we'll find that I'm at 830 feet above sea level. Uh, we plug those into a little calculator and we find out that water is actually going to boil here in my kitchen at 210.3 degrees Fahrenheit. Now if you live someplace where you have multiple stories um, and you're well above that ground level, um, figure add an additional 10 feet per story to come up with that same number to plug into the calculations and come up with what the actual boiling point of water is in your kitchen. But the idea here is by bracketing the range that we're actually going to use this guy at, we'll then have a reasonable level of, of assurance that it's accurate all the way through that entire range. So getting a pot of boiling water going as we speak and let's see how it does. All right, so here we are with our second calibration point, like we talked about, boiling distilled water, pure water. Now, we all know water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees C, but that's under ideal conditions, and as we, like we talked about, our conditions are rarely ideal. So in this case, I did the math, a little number crunching, and found out that water should boil at about 210 degrees, 210.3 to be a little more precise. So let's see where we're at. So we're bouncing right around 211 degrees. Again, two degree accuracy. I'd call that pretty good. All right, so as we saw, well within that two degree range. Uh, one thing that we did see with this guy is that the numbers tend to jump around a little bit. I expect that with any quick read device. Um, however, the numbers didn't jump around dramatically. It's not like they're jumping around three, four, five degrees. They're jumping around a few tenths of a degree. And we're looking at a device with a two degree claimed accuracy. Uh, so that's pretty normal and just par for the course. Uh, so just overall thoughts on the uh, G dealer uh, thermal pen here from that I got from Amazon for under $10, which is pretty impressive to say the least. Uh, right out of the back box, accurate, um, well within its required stated tolerances. Um, they actually threw in a, an extra battery, which is kind of nice to have. It, just in case, nothing worse than when your thermometer goes dead and you don't have a battery for it right in the middle of cooking something. So I like to keep spares around. And uh, the other nice thing with this device too is that it does have the ability to perform a calibration adjustment. Uh, the calibration adjustment on this is just a single point adjustment that occurs at that freezing point of water, so easy enough to put together. And it's gonna come in the form of what we would call to as an I call an offset calibration where it's going to shift the entire range up or down. Um, probably play with this thing, you know, in the future, see how it does and if it drifts or not. Uh, maybe amend this video in like six months or so. Uh, we'll see how it does at, by then. Um, so thank you. Um, actually say I can recommend this little guy for, for the money. Cannot beat it. Um, thanks for tuning in. Hope you understand a little bit more about how to go about some of these things with calibrating thermometers in your own kitchen. Um, it's really critical for both food safety and food quality. Uh, if your thermometer's reading way off and you go to check your chicken because you're looking for that 165 cardinal point, turns out your thermometer's way off, you're actually cooking your chicken to 170, 175 degrees, you're gonna have dried out meat. And that's 
not the kind of stuff that we like to do around here. So thanks for tuning in. Talk to you again soon. Thank you.